As the gantry cranes at the two major shipyards in the north and south swung in unison, and the massive section silently came together under the satellite's gaze, a core question emerged. Following the Fujian, China's first aircraft carrier equipped with electromagnetic catapult technology, why is the highly anticipated next-generation carrier not advancing directly to nuclear propulsion as many anticipated? Instead, it may debut as a conventionally powered supercarrier, 79 meters wide with a full load displacement of approximately 90,000 tons once again placing conventional propulsion at the forefront. This is by no means technological conservatism or regression. Rather, it precisely reflects the strategic wisdom guiding China's aircraft carrier development, advancing steadily through incremental leaps in the new era. It represents a deliberate strategic choice grounded in rapidly generating mature combat capabilities and maximizing regional control effectiveness. Looking back at China's carrier journey, each step bears the mark of solidity and steadiness, from extracting design essence through the Liaoning's conversion, to achieving comprehensive breakthroughs with the domestically built Shandong, and then leaping directly to mastering the cutting-edge electromagnetic catapult technology with the Fujian. The Chinese Navy has forged a unique and efficient growth path. As China's first domestically designed and built catapult-equipped carrier, the Fujian's significance extends beyond its 80,000-ton displacement. It validates a more advanced integrated shipboard power system distinct from the American approach. Experts note that electromagnetic catapults offer superior precision in power output regulation compared to traditional steam systems, enabling adaptation for aircraft ranging from heavy fighters to light drones. This significantly enhances the flexibility and efficiency of carrier-based aircraft operations. The choice of conventional propulsion over nuclear power for the Fujian stems from a comprehensive assessment of technical complexity, construction costs, maintenance systems, and nuclear safety risks. Historical precedent demonstrates that even the U.S. Navy, with its mature nuclear propulsion technology, experienced a period of indecision after building the nuclear-powered enterprise, subsequently returning to develop the conventionally-powered Kitty Hawk-class carriers. This clearly illustrates that the selection of propulsion systems serves the strategic demands and technological realities of a specific era. Today, the successful sea trials and rapid combat readiness of the Fujian have illuminated an exceptionally reliable and advanced branch on China's aircraft carrier technology tree, conventional propulsion paired with electromagnetic catapults. While external attention focuses on the legendary Type 005 carrier, its most probable developmental path lies not in radical disruption but in the ultimate optimization and enhancement of this robust branch. The widely discussed 79-meter deck width and approximately 90,000-ton displacement carry strategic value far exceeding mere dimensional increases. Compared to the Fujian, the wider deck promises revolutionary improvements in flight deck efficiency, it fundamentally resolves potential scheduling bottlenecks caused by the Fujian's single-side elevator arrangement on the starboard side provides ample space for a second elevator on the port side, and significantly expands the aircraft preparation and parking zones. The expanded deck also allows for greater spacing between catapults, eliminating takeoff and landing constraints imposed by the wingspans of next-generation stealth fighters like the J-35 and fixed-wing early warning aircraft such as the KJ-600. This enables scheduling as smooth and efficient as a high-speed rail station. Military analysts note that a core indicator of carrier combat effectiveness is aircraft launch and recovery capability. An optimized deck design enables higher daily flight operations, thereby establishing more sustained and intensive aerial deterrence over critical maritime zones. Given the Fujian's technological advancements, why doesn't the Type 005 directly adopt nuclear propulsion for ultimate performance? This decision reflects the Chinese Navy's pragmatic strategic philosophy. First, the conventional propulsion technology chain is fully integrated and highly mature forming a complete and efficient system from construction and testing to maintenance and replenishment. Choosing mature conventional propulsion ensures the Type 005 can achieve rapid design, rapid construction, rapid commissioning, and rapid combat readiness based on the Fujian's foundation, critical for urgent strategic time windows. Second, the Chinese Navy's strategic requirements are layered and regionally differentiated. Nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, with their virtually unlimited endurance, are undoubtedly the ideal platform for global deployment and distant sea presence. However, in the Western Pacific, a critical maritime zone vital to China's core interests, operational range is not the primary constraint. Supported by replenishment ships, modern conventionally powered carriers already possess the formidable capability to deploy continuously for months and traverse over 10,000 kilometers, sufficient to cover key regions. A military expert, while analyzing China's dual-carrier group training exercises in distant waters, 
noted that our carrier groups operate at extreme distances, meaning their combat effectiveness must inevitably be honed on the high seas. Therefore, developing a regionally dominant supercarrier, one that delivers the highest aircraft operational efficiency, and sortie rates within specific zones while maintaining controllable costs and risks, holds tactical and strategic value no less significant than a globally deployable nuclear-powered carrier. The future is likely to see a dual-track system, where nuclear and conventional carriers complement each other's capabilities. Nuclear-powered carriers would handle global patrols and strategic deterrence, while top-tier conventional carriers like the Type 005 would focus on achieving decisive air and see superiority within the first and second island chains. Meanwhile, the remarkable vitality demonstrated by China's two major shipbuilding bases in the north and south provides a robust industrial foundation for this multi-track development model. Both the Dalian shipyard in the north and the Jiangnan shipyard in the south possess formidable capabilities for constructing large aircraft carriers. Satellite imagery revealing concurrent bustling operations at both sites signifies not only a leap in construction speed, but also represents China's aircraft carrier industrial system achieving top-tier capabilities for parallel iteration and multi-model development. This capability far surpasses that achievable by a single shipyard. It ensures uninterrupted technological continuity and sustained growth of skilled personnel, enabling each incremental step to be taken faster and more steadily. As analysts note from the Liaoning to the era of five carriers, the Chinese Navy has achieved leapfrog development in a time frame shorter than Western expectations. Looking ahead, the strategic landscape of the Western Pacific is being profoundly reshaped by the operational footprint of China's carrier strike groups. The dual carrier formation comprising the Liaoning and Shandong has repeatedly ventured into distant seas, with some observers even suggesting it has conducted high-intensity training near the second island chain. This demonstrates that China's existing carrier forces possess formidable capabilities for distant sea system operations. Upon commissioning, the Fujian will introduce a new combination of heavy fighters, with electromagnetic catapult launch, stealth fighters, and fixed-wing early warning aircraft, significantly expanding the fleet's reconnaissance and strike radius. When the Type 005, conventionally powered supercarrier, featuring a 79-meter flight deck and optimized down to the finest details, joins the fleet, the Chinese Navy will assemble a carrier strike group that ranks among the world's elite in terms of aircraft capacity, daily sortie rates, and sustained combat endurance. No longer merely a follower, China will redefine the benchmark for regional control carriers through its unique design philosophy and technological approach. Therefore, should the Type 005 carrier truly emerge in its rumored form, it embodies not a reluctant compromise with nuclear propulsion, but rather one of the optimal solutions to the challenge of effectively winning a high-intensity maritime supremacy battle potentially unfolding on China's doorstep. The ceaseless clamor of steel at shipyards across the nation heralds the grand symphony of China's naval evolution, transitioning from near-sea defense to far-sea deterrence and from technological emulation to indigenous innovation. This colossal vessel, potentially designated Type 20, will be more than just a warship, it will be a clear declaration of national strategy. China will build a world-class navy at its own pace and according to its own needs, one capable of resolutely defending its interests while providing robust support for regional peace and stability.